Hey there, scabby scummers and gangers, Crimson Oracle here, uh, running down another battle report from the ongoing Ash Waste Necromunda campaign. Uh, this is an interesting one because we actually went into uh, into a building. Uh, we're playing indoors for the first time this campaign. Uh, the last game, we were focused on a chase of some uh, pack chocobos that a rebel lord had hired the Orlocks to transport, and uh, after completing that mission, the Orlocks were given the coordinates of a uh, secret cache of some valuables to retrieve, and the Vansar and Escher followed and attempted to disrupt uh, the Orlock mission, but um, you'll see everything that happens as the game plays out, so I don't want to spoil anything on that front. Um, this one was a lot of fun. I really like three-way games a lot. Uh, the only thing is they can be a little bit slow, so we tend to uh, go with a small number of fighters just to make everything nice and efficient. But this was on a, a fun map. Uh, we kind of set it up. Uh, we used the treasure hunter scenario from the main rule book as the basis, um, but I set it up a little bit differently because we were playing with uh, all three of us. And so uh, you'll get to see all of the action uh, in just a few moments. So um, I think this is going to be kind of uh, not the last battle report I do for a while, but I'm going to start slowing these releases down um, as the battle reports are super time consuming. And uh, currently, I'm, I, I'm not somebody I don't like how they're coming out. They're coming out OK, but I want to start doing some refining in the process of how I make them, uh, doing a little bit more kind of work. Uh, the the Games Workshop battle report for Necromunda that came out last week uh, definitely had a lot of cool elements that I thought were really helpful. Um, to kind of see if I can incorporate into what I'm doing. Um, so I want to just take a, a stock of things and uh, maybe, you know, regroup and, and start doing uh, the battle reports with a little bit, uh, a little bit more production going into them. Um, of course, everything is a trade-off in terms of uh, time and effort, so um, I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on uh, the videos of, you know, the models and the terrain projects, and of course the battle reports will still come, but they'll be a little bit further between each episode. So uh, I look forward to continuing to share these. Um, I'm looking forward to getting some battle reports with the uh, Dominion campaign that I just started. And of course, I've got a zillion different hobby projects that I want to show off. Uh, there are so many cool things that I've got in my collection and in my uh, work in progress uh, stack on my desk and uh, various things in between. Um, at some point I'm going to do a video about 3D printing and various other stuff like that. In the meanwhile, uh, I'm going to throw off to my service skull Wally, who's going to walk us through the uh, intro to the game, the gangs, and the mission, and then you'll see the rest of the video. Greetings, viewers. I am Wally the Servo Skull, bringing you the rundown on this matchup. But before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe. My dopamine centers are tied directly to the channel's analytics, and I want to be happy. This match is a three-player battle between the gangs in the current campaign. Each gang selected five fighters to bring down into the tunnels beneath the ash waste. The Orlock Kane train brought the heat with the gang's leader, Mr. Kane, sporting his bolt pistol and power fists, arms master with combat shotgun, Two road sergeants with heavy stubbers and suspensers, one with a cyber mastiff, and a wrecker in tow who had just switched out a sawed off or a hand flamer. Orlock's tactics cards for this mission are Lucky Find, which allows a fighter to reload a weapon automatically when making a reload action. Group Tactics, which allows the gang to activate up to three fighters at once to all make the same action. 
and melt a trap, which gives one fighter a melt a trap they can deploy on the board. The Asher Gang, the Coven of the Argent Spire, feature the gang's leader with her needle pistol and stiletto sword, as well as her fur cat, a matriarch with a needle rifle, and a matriarch with dual shock whips and las gun, a ganger with a shotgun, and a juve with las pistol and stiletto knife. Asher's tactics cards are running battle, which lets a fighter or group of fighters who group activate make the run and gun action as though they had hip shooting. Gifts of the Matron, which lets a fighter use a free stim when activating. And Reign of Blades, which lets a fighter make a free charge action when they activate that doesn't count towards their activations. The Vansar gang Sean's dandies feature the gang's prime Rick with his power knife and plasma pistol and two cyberachnids, an Ogmech with a plasma gun, an Archaeotech with Rad Beamer and Cyberachnid, a tech specialist with a plasma gun, and a subtech with a Laz gun. Vansar has the tactics cards Melt a Trap, which gives one fighter a Melt a Trap they can deploy. Lucky Find, which allows a fighter to automatically pass a reload even on a scarce weapon, and a present for you, which allows them to choose a single enemy fighter when they activate and set off a scattering blast with a random effect. The mission for this battle was based on the Treasure Hunter scenario, with some minor adjustments. There are five central tiles. Each has a loot casket deployed on it by the players in turn, and then three outside tiles. One gang deploys in each. The goal is to steal the loot caskets and drag them to contact with a board edge. The player with the most wins, and if two players score equally, they tie. There are no secondary objectives for this mission. Each casket is worth D6 times credits, and the winner gets plus D3 reputation. Fighters deploy within 3 inches of the outside board edges on their tile. The battlefield is set up as a crossroads of tunnels, with a central T where the objectives are located, and then outside tiles where the various gangs will come in. Each player put their fighters as forward as possible as they prepare to race to grab loot caskets. And the battle begins. Asher wins the first priority roll and chooses to move up two matriarchs. Orlock activates his road boss, Wrecker, and Armsmaster. But Vansar has a surprise for Orlock. He uses the A Present for You tactics card, which uh, causes a random explosion to scatter off of the activating fighter. It doesn't scatter. And it turns out to be a fear gas. The wrecker is affected. And so is the leader. And the wrecker becomes broken. And the leader becomes broken. The wrecker flees seven inches. 
and the leader fleece five inches. The arms master moves up to a door and opens it. Vansar launches into a patented large group activation. Azure activates a ganger and moves up. Warlock activates two champions as a group and a cyber mastiff. One moves up. The other opens a door. Vansar activates a subtech and moves up. Asher activates another fighter and moves up. Vansar group activates an Archaeotech and a Cyberachnid, and they move. And Escher activates the Gang Queen and Furcat. Warlock attempts to make a rally test for his two broken fighters. The leader will recover, but the wrecker will stay broken. Orlock will win priority for this round and activate the Road Sergeant who moves up to take a casket and retreat. Vansar activates a subtech who opens a door and moves up. Asher group activates leader and matriarch and uses a tactics card to allow them to run and gun. The leader shoots the road sergeant with her needle pistol. She hits successfully.
She does cause an injury roll. And the Red Sergeant fails his armor save. The Needle Pistol causes a flesh wound. Road Sergeant passes Nerves of Steel and isn't pinned. Matriarch moves up to take a shot at the Arms Master with her Needle Rifle. Her shot is successful. And she will cause an injury roll. The Arms Master fails his armor save and goes out of action. Out cold. Orlock activates a Road Sergeant and Cyber Mastiff and moves them over. Road Sergeant takes a shot at the Escher Gang Queen. He hits four times with his Heavy Stubber. The Heavy Stubber will wound four times. and the queen will fail one armor save and take a wound. The fur cat moves up along with her master. Vansar institutes another group action. The cyberacnid will make a move with the casket as far as it can go. The Cyberacnid passes its cool check for being three, more than three inches away from its leader. And the leader, the other Cyberacnid, and the Ogmech move up. Asher activates a Matriarch and moves down toward another loot casket. Orlock group activates a road boss and wrecker. The road boss will move up. The wrecker continues to cower from the fear gas. Vansar activates Archaeotech and Cyberachnid. And they will move a casket towards his board. Asher activates a sister and moves her up. Vansar activates a tech specialist who moves down. Asher leaves the final fighter where she is. Bottom of turn two. Wrecker stays broken once again. Asher wins priority for this round. They activate Queen, Furcat, and Matriarch. The Furcat runs the box back. The fur cat breaks and runs back. 
she goes six inches. The gang queen passes her spring up test. She charges the road sergeant. The needle pistol hits and it gets an ammo check, but it does not go out of ammunition. The needle pistol causes an injury roll. And the stiletto sword hits twice and causes two injury rolls. Orlock fails three armor saves. And the queen will coup the road sergeant. Gets a 51 head injury, minus one intelligence and willpower. Matriarch moves up to shoot at the road sergeant. But the needle rifle misses. The Orlock activates road boss and charges the game queen. Bolt pistol hits. And wounds. The queen will fail her armor save. And the power fist will hit three times. And wound three times. The queen will fail all three saves. And she will take three flesh wounds and go out of action. She gets an 11 lucky escape, which gets her D3 bonus XP. And she gets three bonus XP. Vansar group activates. And the tech specialist throws a smoke grenade. The smoke grenade hits and passes its ammo check. The Ogmec fires a plasma gun at the matriarch. Plasma gun hits three times. And it does uh, one wound. The matriarch fails her armor save and takes a flesh wound. The prime then targets the matriarch with his plasma pistol. A plasma pistol will hit. And it will cause a wound. The matriarch fails her armor save. And she goes out of action. She gets a 23 out cold. Cyberacted moves towards the casket. But he fails his cool check and falls back seven inches.
The other cyberarachnid moves the casket. Then breaks and falls back seven inches. Escher activates a little sister who gets the casket to the board edge. Orlock activates Road Sergeant and shoots at the Matriarch. And the Heavy Cyber hits twice and rolls an ammo check. The Heavy Sever goes out of ammo. The Heavy Sever wounds twice. And the Matriarch fails two armor saves. And is seriously injured. The Cyber Mastiff moves up. The subtech places a melter trap down and runs six inches away. The sister takes an aim shot with acid rounds of the cyber mastiff. The shot is a hit. It fails to wound. but the pooch is set on fire. The Wrecker continues to hide. The Archaeotech and Cyberarachnid move up for the Vansar. And we have reached the bottom of round three. The Escher Matriarch stays injured. The Wrecker stays broken. And the smoke grenade sticks around. Warlock wins the priority roll. Warlock uses the group activation tactics card. And the road boss charges the sister. It's successful. The bolt pistol hits. The bolt pistol wounds. The Power Fist hits twice and wounds twice. Sister does not save the Bolt Pistol shot. And the Sister will go out of action. She gets a 64 medical escort. The road sergeant charges the injured matriarch, succeeds, and coos her. She gets 53 hand injury. The massif is not hurt by flames.
The Mastiff runs into a wall and tries to put itself out. But it stays on fire. The Vansar group activate. By daisy chaining the loot crate along, they manage to get it off the board. As a result, Vansar are victorious. Including fixer income, Vansar earns 100 credits. Orlock earns 10. A bit rough. And including fixer income, Escher earns 40. And that is going to wrap up this battle report. Thanks again to my patrons for helping me uh, keep this show on the air. Uh, if you are interested in becoming a patron, you can head over to patreon.com and you can get access to early episodes of the podcast and have your name up here on these videos. And of course, don't forget to check out the podcast. Uh, it is a just an absolute massive trove of Necromunda material and I'm very proud of all the work I've done there and of course uh, everybody stay safe and don't forget to change your paint water <laughs>